една от тези за моя мама, след за чек, ако ме е част от жена, но тук е си, с делегация, с мама, с мама. Окей, значи, какво поздравя, ние си изкупи, си присохни, ще дам така, ще дам тя професори и професорица, и тук си остали. Хвала, да сте се дали съдележили, те е наша конференция. Като вероятно же весте, госта данашни и нютрични дан посвеча на разправам, дебатам и повезованию с нашими гости и стоварищих организаций и гибани стоина. В смысле, то повезование, взаимо та желья по повезованию, и была тоди в звук, за то, что мы организировали эту конференцию. Все же нему изменять свои искушения, размышления и знания, то есть сведом споставить некое соделывание за внутрь. Ясно я нам речь, что процессы, которые доживляем в сфере высокого школьства, уже некое время, не со мной само словенский и зум, а пак те силы делают в прицей подобной смере, которые держат вокруг нас, разликуют себя в темпе и в интенсивности. Зато смо конференцию туди заставили и поименовали с изъевом «Мислити универзо 21-го столетия». С такой заставитвью желим окончено отпрети расправу, ки во упаму водила к ресни анализи озирома рефлексии болонской реформы и преку критики ЛТ пришла туди до размислика о потенциальных или потенциальных возможностях универзо 21-го столетия. Все по морам об тем заведать, да само с теорией, озирома размисликом, лако придамо сгоре до некой точки и да е шеле прак се тиста, ки е спременя станя в тема искусти. Здесь да накратко зачет... Да накратко зачетамо сам потек тега првега склопа меднародне конференце, ки бо потекало в наследних урок за предавальници. До приближно 11.45 бомо послушали три приспевки, с которыми се будут представили организации «Студентский плен» из Македонии, пять университетов из Албании и «Студентский фронт» из Сербии. По всяких представителей бы следила крайша дебата. По всех трех первых трех представителях в 15-минутный отбор наделевали по бомо с преосталими приспевки, так что мы бы представили «Искра» из Словении и по «International Student Gathering», то би морало трајати до приближно 13.30, ко па бо следило предавање докторја Приможа Крашевца и купамо да туди некај првих одговорам на состављени изјеву мислити универзо 21-го столетија. Тема бо се следило од првата расправа. Та први склад тук е на Филозовски факултети, па бо заключили до 14.30, ко бо следило одмор за посило. Сведа потем, като веретно весте, се конференција надалјува тут на факултети за дружба не веде, та да сте се изволе повадени да се придружите туди там. Зай би рада поздравила ше наше доста и Струјине, знаме со Студентски фронт и Србија, и Сарајева. Да, не смо. Звук, развук смо. А кдо ти дела на тема? Студентски пленум из Копија и па пер универзитетин из Тирана. Хвала да сте пришли. Па ше екрат хвала всем усталим. Така сам рекла, упам да бисте знали туди по поводан и да бомо знова показали, да е вечина тега говора о апатичних студентих и влених професорих, ле плоскула, с катеру се стил спремен да не досегнива. Največ še zdaj povabim, da se nam pridružite tudi jutri z večeru v Pritličju na iskrenem solidarnostnem žuru, s katerim bomo zbirali donacije za plačilo kazni, ki smo jo prijeli za organizacija protesta Lani proti spisu. Ok, zdaj pa mislim, da je čas, da presedlamo na angliščino. I think it's time that I start speaking in English. And I would like to invite representatives from Macedonia to start with your presentation. Okay, I'm going to uh, biologically try to explain the, the situation with the new law that was uh, amended in Macedonia and how the um, revolt of students started and we organized uh, the, stu uh, the plenum of students. So uh, last, years in the, uh, last years in Macedonia we had a lot of changes with the higher education but the new law was almost like uh, fatal, fatal for our uh, higher education, um, it was called like ex external test, uh, testing, later changed to uh, state exam, um, and it was uh, constituted of um, uh, te testing to second year and fourth year of students. If we didn't pass the exam, we would lose the right to continue with our uh, studies. Uh, why this uh, new law was problematic? It was for several several reasons, but uh, the main reason was uh, uh, autonomy of uh, of the university, which is uh, 
which is uh, uh, defended by, by the Constitution. Uh, so why this new law uh, abolishes the autonomy of our university? Uh, well, first of all, uh, during our studies we have uh, exams, testing, we write academic papers, essays, and a lot of stuff with our professors. And all of that can't be questioned and measured with uh, five questions, quiz questions. Um, uh, so, um, the new law formulated in this way uh, was not a good way to, to measure our knowledge. Um, uh, secondly, it was very problematic about creative arts. For example, how can that be uh, measured with five questions? Um, and all of that uh, protested in uh, a lot of protests and at last we, we occupied our uh, university. Uh, second problem is the besides humiliating humiliation of students was the humiliation for the professors because this law directly abolishes the legitimacy of a professor uh, during our studies professor uh, create a relationship with their students so academic relationship and then with this new law uh, the, gra the grading of the professors will be only like a passport so that we can enter the external testing uh, so we see a lot uh, of problems with this uh, new law and after a lot of um, requests, demands, protests over 10,000 people on the street, at last we occupied our university and we didn't uh, let go of it until the demands were met. After two weeks, the government started to cooperate with us and uh, now uh, we are working project in the new law, which includes also the delegates from our student plenum. Um, I would also like to add uh, why this, uh, these uh, late protests were so important, is that because until now, in Macedonia students, uh, instead of being the avant-garde of the society, how they should be, were the most uh, passive structure, structure, and so this awakened us. But uh, its very important element is the transnational uh, transnational solidarity because, as we know, Macedonia is very, has uh, ethnic uh, tensions. So there were a lot of Albanians and Macedonians fight, fighting together. First of all, as students for a common uh, good. Okay, uh, I would like to continue with the second problem in. Higher education, it's actually a problem, an issue with the student standards. Uh, there are two laws in the Macedonian uh, law that concern first the higher education uh, and second the student standard. The, st uh, the student standard has uh, a couple of points that crushes the most fundamental rights uh, of the individual, especially the students in Macedonia, to live. First of all, you're probably familiar with the uh, pictures of the student dormitory in Skopje, Gocidelce, where even the minimal living standards were not met. For example, there are milk and humidity in all the rooms in uh, the student dormitory in Skopje, where about 50,000 uh, students live, that's half of the students in Skopje. And uh, of course, there is lack of heating, lack of heating uh, during winter, where Students must go to their hometown and travel uh, every day because they can't live in their dormitories. Also, there is uh, there are destroyed beds and uh, toilets. There aren't even places to go uh, to bed and wash yourself. Where uh, there's usually um, action that you go to uh, cafes and everything just to go to uh, to the toilet because you can't go to the toilet in the dormitory. Also, the quality of the food. There were occasions when you can find bugs in the food that you were eating. So they are kind of didn't invest at all of the money. They are just taking the food that was rotten and everything, and then they just cooked it and uh, placed it in the dormitory so the students couldn't eat it like for a minimal cost. Uh, also, uh, on two occasions last year, first in the summer, one of the elevators fell down. Luckily, there weren't any people there, but that was uh, supposed to happen because 
Uh, they are not reconstructed for, I don't know, from Yugoslavia probably 30 years or more. And also, in October, uh, in one of the dormitories, one student fell off and one student was injured. Um, that's probably the most critical point with the student standards. The second thing is the issue with the cost of the universities. First of all, I would like to mention the ICSA, uh, also known as the Faculty Activities Cost. It's like uh, we pay about 12 euros, um, more or less 12 euros each semester for namely activities that don't happen. They name like uh, cultural activities and sport acti uh, sports activities, but they don't even happen. And a uh, couple of that amount goes to the student parliament, which uh, I call it, we we'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. And we don't know how the, uh, how the money are, uh, how the money flows and where it goes and with, uh, what is it spent on. And the second thing, we pay about five, uh, 15 euros each semester for documents for a, a regular student. Uh, that didn't happen two years ago, and 15 euros per semester, it, it's pretty much a lot for a Macedonian standard. Uh, adding up to that is the 200 to 400 euros for uh, studying in, high, uh, in a university, which uh, in total sums up to about 500 to 700 euros just for education in Macedonia, which is pretty much a lot, because having in mind that 32% of the Macedonians are employed. Unemployed, yeah. yeah. Hi. So, as you could hear from my colleagues, we in Macedonia as a student have, have so many problems. And I think one of the biggest problems is that we don't have someone to talk about these problems. There is this uh, student body that exists. They call themselves student parliament, but they're not legit. They have uh, this president, which term ended a few months ago, but still the government renew it for him because they are sent by the government. And as uh, my friend said, they receive a huge amount of money. We give them a huge amount of money and they just don't exist. We don't know uh, what they do, what their activities are. They are never, never interested in any student activities whatsoever. Uh, for example, uh, as you know, in December we had this very big protest. About uh, 10,000 students came to protest this law and when the the president of the student parliament was asked if he had attended, he said, I don't know, maybe I had, maybe I hadn't. <laughs> he, he wasn't sure if he was there. Uh, so that's when that's where the need for student Lennon came. Um, because, uh, as I said, student parliament does nothing to help solve our problem. So uh, we hope that in September uh, we are going to run for Presidency and destroy student parliament as it destroys us. <laughs> Thank you. That's about it. Hello. Uh, yeah. Firstly, I would like to thank the people from the student plan for coming here to share with us their uh, problems with the higher education in Macedonia. Their movement is under constant pressure and scrutiny from the very government that should work with them instead of being pressured to cooperate by massive protests and unstable political climate. I am a Macedonian, yet I am not part of the student plan, therefore I cannot speak on their behalf. Instead, I am a part of a growing community that has left Macedonia long term to study in other countries. In Slovenia alone, there are hundreds of Macedonians that are attending the, what, some of her faculties. Nearly everyone in Macedonia knows at least one person that has left our country to study abroad. Those numbers, if you add them up, are not only high, they become frightening. That being said, I do not have the arrogance, as some do, to claim that, Macedonian that the Macedonian student body are unified in regards to their opinion on the educational system in Slovenia as in Macedonia alike. However, the one point that I am going to make rings true for a significant portion of the student body that has left Macedonia. We are constantly being asked a question by our peers and our countrymen. Why did you choose to leave your country? And therefore, we defend ourselves. We say that we wanted to study away, that we wanted to travel, we wanted to meet new people, have new experiences. Some of us have families there, we use that too. 
And after a while, we begin to realize the truth that if you have the information that we have, if you have the opportunities that we have, such as the finances, the chance to get a visa, or even a EU passport, and if you know that after you graduate in Macedonia, what are the chances of you getting a job or even starting your own business without the boot of the government constantly pressing on your throat, you will realize the truth. We never had a choice to begin with. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentations. Uh, I must say that uh, I think that here in Slovenia we have a lot of very, very similar problems as you had in Macedonia, especially about those uh, student representatives here. Uh, and I'm sure that you're going to hear a lot of similar stories from Albania and Serbia as well. Uh, now, if anybody has any questions or comments, I'm open in the debate, so feel free to ask anything. <coughs> No comments, no questions? Okay, maybe later on. Uh, so now I would like to invite uh, representatives from Albania, from the Universität, and, uh, to describe your situation. Okay. So I have to stay like this? No, I think it's going to work. I'm just okay. leave yes. in a bit. <laughs> okay, so uh, from our team, I will, will be the only one speaking. Uh, first, I would like to, have, to, to just make a historical context of the higher education reforms in Albania. As we already know, Albania was part of the Stalinist regimes, like all the Eastern Europe. And uh, after the regime fall, uh, there was uh, the only way left and thought for these countries to prosper and to be economically let's say, transformed, was through the neoliberal reforms. Uh, this ideology was high, highly accepted, not, not only by the political parties, but also it was implemented deep in the society. Uh, so everyone now thinks that uh, the only way to improve our status and our country and to make, thing, to make things better is the market. So that is the way also the higher education was transformed, considering that the market and uh, everything that is uh, going along this idea is going to function better. Uh, now, higher education after, after 25 years is now, as we call it, the last castle uh, resisting the neoliberal invasion. Let's say because everything now is privatized, the industry, the mines, the coal, everything in our country at least, it's, it's, it's totally privatized. See, so the only thing left are these, the, 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 the health sector and the education sector. Yeah, the health sector, we have a lot, a lot of private uh, hospitals. And uh, in the universities, in the education, we have more than we need private universities. Uh, so what has happened is that uh, uh, at least during the, the last 10 years, we have uh, had a massive, uh, let's say, wave of uh, private universities uh, being built and open everywhere. Uh, without no, uh, let's say, no legal, even no, without no legal status. Uh, we, you, if you come to Albania, it's not strange that you see, uh, for example, a building and the second floor is a university, the third floor is uh, another office, and the first floor is parking. I mean, it's, it's, it's not strange, really. Uh, we have more than 40 private universities and only 10, uh, 11, with also arts public universities. So that is uh, the, the way they open the space for them to, uh, these reforms, is by creating first the private universities also in this chaotic competition. Everyone opens a university like they open uh, usual business, so everyone does business. Uh, so now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, important to mention only the, the last five years, because that, that is the most important one, because if we go like 24 or 5 years, uh, this law has been amended more than 10 times, the law on higher education. So we would, uh, it would take like one day just to speak about that. But the last 5 years are very important to see because that is the, uh, the period when uh, the, 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 the neoliberal reforms uh, start identifying and uh, uh, showing themselves. 
let's say. And also the people who promote this, uh, they uh, uh, openly expose themselves and they say that we are for this, for, for the liberal reforms, we are for the market, everything uh, has to be controlled by the market and the government is, like we already know, is every, every time is, is bad. Uh, we had uh, uh, the Socialist Party and the Democratic Party, which are the main parties and which are the main, let's say, political actors in the in the in the country. They have uh, unanimously uh, accepted this ideology, and uh, none of that has made even the let's say the the simplest attempt to say something. Not against that, not for the sake of saying, but to say what is wrong with this this ideology. For example, what is wrong with, uh, with opening 40, having, having 40 private universities and uh, when they are just selling uh, diplomas? Uh, what is wrong when they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they want to uh, make public funds, which are now only for, private, uh, for public universities, they want to uh, make these funds accessible for private universities also. Private universities also. Now we know, for example, private universities uh, have a tradition. Uh, in in the uh, UK, uh, uh, with hundreds of years, they have. But the, the context where they, they were founded was totally different. They are foundations, they were a uh, product of uh, philanthropy, uh, philanthropy enterprises, and so on. But in Albania, that is a business. So now it's a business. And if you also uh, give them public funds, you are just keeping them there, making them stronger. And uh, the point is that the government uh, is not giving, uh, it's not making these funds uh, open for every private university, private university, but because that would be too much. They are making these funds open for four or five private universities, which are the biggest one, which have the broadest connection and network, which have the media, we have universities that have media, newspapers, television, magazines, like they have everything. Uh, let's say they can influence not only the, uh, the, the, the they cannot not only the lobby in the official way in the government, but they influence the public opinion. So their actions are always legitimate and uh, are always seen so like they make their actions seem like being the, the, the perfect one and the right one. Uh, Private universities uh, have, I think, have, has, ha have had a really bad impact in our way of, uh, let's say, the restructuring, uh, in the process of restructuring the higher education in general, because they have lobbied so long for this reform, which is on the way and which is expected to pass this month in the parliament, that uh, we have been deal we have been. Uh, let's say focusing, everyone has been focusing on this reform instead of focusing on reforming the public sector. Let's say we have been focusing on reforming the whole system because of the influence of the private universities, where, in our opinion, uh, first it, it, uh, it is wrong they were allowed to, <laughs> to, 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 let's say, to, to, be, to be found like the universities, because they didn't have the status, we didn't have the law which allowed private universities, so, uh, now, in, in my opinion, it's also is is uh, totally legitimate if you just close these universities because they will, let's say, illegally, if, even in the formal way, open. So now they are influencing and they want to make to to pass through the legal way. Uh, so if they make accessible the public funds, that is just stealing, but not let's say that is not called like a crime because it goes through the parliament. It's it's not anymore like stealing grabbing from somebody's pocket, but it's grabbing from the budget, state budget through the whole, let's say, a long process of laws and bureaucracies and so on. Uh, now, uh, uh, what I would like to mention also, uh, another one is that the private public universities now are in a really bad situation. Uh, what they did is that they left intentionally the pri public universities, they underfunded, underfunded, they didn't give the money for public universities, and then it, uh, public universities came to a point that, where they didn't have nothing to offer to the students. They have only these old buildings, they don't have teachers, they don't have academic staff, they don't have let's say, all the facilities which can create the, the conditions, the proper condition where the students can not only come and listen, but they can be productive. 
So they left these universities intentionally, without funds. So when they s say to the public that public universities don't function, we have to transform the public universities like private universities, because look at the private universities, how good are they? How big is their library? Look at their, their television and so on. So they have to convince their, the, like the, the whole people that they this way, the whole way, the, not, 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 not only the, the one public university, but, but ideologically, they, this doesn't function. Public doesn't function. What is public is bad. Look what is happening. And uh, it seems like a, a good, very good strategy. I mean, you leave uh, public property without funds and it, uh, let's say, it, it obviously it, it, it's going to, to, to be destroyed. Uh, this transformation of uh, higher education has, uh, has uh, let's say, deep implications because uh, uh, it changed the way we perceive also higher education. Uh, now, if higher public, if you have a public university, when everyone can can go, if it is, uh, let's say, generally uh, accessible without, even if you don't have the money to pay, now you have to pay. Uh, with this reform, you have to pay more. Actually, now we pay in average like 800 euros uh, a year uh, in a country where the minimum wage is like it's is less than 150 euros, for example. So it's, 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 it's a lot now, and with this reform it's just going to progressively increase. And uh, now we change the way we perceive the education. Now you can be good, you can be uh, talented, but uh, if you don't have the money, you cannot go to the university. It's so simple. You cannot just go. With this reform, the government says that we are going to offer an opportunity to all these students which come from these disadvantaged groups. They can take loans. It's another, like another, another, uh, yeah, they have to yeah, invest in the capital, they have to take loans. So if you don't have money, you are allowed to take loan, and the government, which, let's say, which is going to be the guarantee, which is going to guarantee your, your loan, so basically the money comes from the state budget, goes to the private universities, uh, pays, goes to the bank, goes everywhere, but not to, let's say, not for doing something, but just for for some people and some, let's say, some agents in, in, in this economic system to, to be profitable, but not uh, to create something. You can take a loan and you can finish, you have to finish. If you take a loan, you are like an indebted subject. You are, uh, you have to obey, you have to, what you have to think is how to find a job, how to graduate, how to find a better job and to pay for the fee, uh, than the loan, than to think for your future. So it's uh, they want they, it's an intensive engagement. Uh, loan in itself is an intensive engagement. You you, you are not leaving your university, the thing that you are not going to work, but you have also a loan to pay. So it's not that you are you have the degree and now you start from zero. You start from minus. So you start with ten thousand euros <laughs> minus. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, it's a broad analysis, but I, I really I do I don't want to last to to keep it so long because it's better for discussion. Uh, in, in the public uh, universities, this is going to deeply transform the structure because in order to compete uh, with the uh, private universities in, in order to take public funds, they will have to, to transform they, they, themselves. And they have to restructure like, like business units. For example, a lecture is not going, it's not going only to give a lecture to the students, but it's going to apply for projects. So it's going to be like project manager, manager who is like uh, widely known, these people who you know, apply for projects, like NGO. I mean, like a foundation, like a simple foundation. Uh, you have to survive. You have to, to apply to the government uh, for a loan if you if you are not for for the, for the project. If you are not good at that, you have to hire someone who is doing the PR job. You know all these promotional stuff, and uh, everything will be the image. Uh, everything will be fake, of course. We already see this. We we see every day the promotion campaign of these big let's say big companies like. Uh, Phone, cell phone companies, Vodafone and all, all this, they just put a big umbrella in front of the faculty and they promote all the day. But when we organize a protest, for example, they don't allow you. 
So uh, you have to go like to, to a, a month to spend your energy just to, to to take the permission to organize a public meeting in the faculty. But uh, business can come very easy and make their promotion, sell their stuff there inside the faculty. The faculty, uh, and even the the police force can enter very easily there. So. Uh, what I would like to mention as the, the, the last one, because I have skipped some, some, uh, uh, some stuff, uh, is that uh, uh, this reform has been attempted by two governments. First, the right-wing government, the so-called right-wing government. It is a right-wing government and the so-called socialist government. We call the reformists. Uh, they always are calling themselves, we want to reform and we are in the position of conservatives. So it looks like we, are, we don't want the reform, actually we would say that we want more than a reform. <laughs> if it would be in our, on our hands, we would do more than a reform. So the left and the right, there is no distinction between them, like I think it happens everywhere and they have just accepted this. But they have accepted that that is the way to do it. The only uh, subject, let's say, even political subject, uh, is uh, <coughs> now is a small organization which is called political organization and which has founded this uh, universitarian movement and uh, which has been at active for one year at least. And uh, it, is, it is very, it is growing very fast. Uh, not only in the participation, but uh, in the enthusiasm, let's say. We see that there is a lot of enthusiasm among the students. They want to do something because they are so deep in this everyday monotony, you know, doing every, everyday stuff. And if you want to engage, for example, politically, uh, you have to go to the, these traditional political parties. They do nothing. Uh, I mean, they, 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 uh, they, they metaphorically, they kill you. I mean, politically they kill it because they put you somewhere and they, you just go to the party, you start doing very ordinary things and you are just not thinking. So the only way for us is to, to fund this movement and to try to approach as many students as possible uh, because we see that there is a lot of hope uh, coming from this movement. Uh, and since we are the only one, uh, we are going to be, and since we are independent, and we have exposed and we have defined ourselves as an independent political organization. Uh, we don't say this very openly, I was also having a discussion with, we don't say this very often that we are political because uh, the, the trend, the most popular trend is apolitical. I mean, if you say to somebody, I'm political, like let's say I, I, I have a political engagement, no one is going to listen, what are you going to say next two minutes? because they are going to uh, think that you are coming from the political party and so on. They don't make this distinction between the party and political engagement. It's so hard. Uh, the, 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 the massive protest that has happened uh, against the demolition of nuclear weapons, just like this example, uh, people shouted, like 10,000 people shouting, no politics, no politics, which for us was very, like we were in a very s small group there in that, protest that was very, let's say, regressive. Uh, you cannot go 10,000 people there and shout no politics, because that is pure politics. <laughs> that is confrontation, that, is, yeah, that has to do with power, with government and everything. But we are trying to change this and to found a new tradition of protest. And, uh, but it's very hard to, to, to say this openly. Uh, we have, you have to engage and to approach students and to Social, get socialized with them and try to explain in an easier way. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I took a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we are open for discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I must say that uh, I think the Viennese were experienced uh, very similar problems regarding to their uh, being political <laughs> in faculties. Uh, when we come to the students, they're like, oh my god, no, not politics again. Yeah. And they're like, but everything is politics. If we want to change anything, we must think politically. Um, okay, again, I'm opening the debate. Any comments, questions? Okay, Matej? Okay, I have a, a short question uh, for comrades from Albania. Even with these horrid conditions um, and with this debt that one must take to study, what is the percentage of students, of people enrolling in universities? 
yeah, that is a good question because uh, what the government now considers higher education is considered a privilege, not a right. So what they are doing is they are working a lot with secondary education and primary education, but they are not working with, for, for in higher education. And they uh, actually they don't have statistics how many students drop out of uh, higher school, for example. So we can see how many students are applying and how many students get enrolled. I think now uh, there is a, like 70 something percentage, like 70. Uh, Let's say 75% of the people who are who finish the high school they go to universities. Most of them go to public universities. Now that it's almost free to enter, not let's say it's free to enter now that you don't have these uh, bureaucratic uh, you know barriers like exams and so on. You just have uh, matura, we call it uh, yeah, uh, high school. Yeah, yeah, that is total. I don't know how it functions, but the point is that everyone can go to university. For, I mean, they cannot go if they don't have the money, but I mean, everyone can go. <laughs> so it's, it's open, it's free, but it's not. It's, it's, in, uh, in theory, it's free because everyone can go and also there is no restrictions. Uh, you can pass very easily the exam. But the point is that we don't know where is, how much, how broad is this part that don't have the, let's say, the, the chance and the possibility even to apply. I mean, they don't have statistics. They just say that 75% of the students are coming to. But what about the 25%? Uh, so they are not coming because they, are, they think they are not good. While we see that most of the students are in the same level, or they are not coming because they, they think that they are not going to. Not they think, but they can. They are convinced that they are. They can pay for for the tuition fee. They can not sustain themselves even for one year or six months. So they drop out of school, then they go to work, and it's becoming very, uh, very popular now to work, let's say, underpaid and to with in the black market and to do these promotional campaigns, which are very, uh, let's say, uh, let's say very optimizing uh, activities. We have thousands, almost ten thousand students, and even students who work in call centers are called. Uh, what they do is that they stay eight hours with headphones in their ears and they get uh, automatic phone calls and they just speak. You know, the, the modern times in the chaplain movement, now it's coming back in the new, like, remodelated, really. Uh, I just wanted to ask is, uh, in your organization, are people uh, going to the public uh, university or they're in private or yeah. what is... The... Mostly, like 90%, let's say, for example, if you take 20, is, uh, we are 20 members of the organization, 99% are from public universities. And you work mostly with the people from the public schools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't work at all in private universities. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have had some people, like, for example, five people, they came from public universities, uh, but they didn't have the chance. You know, sometimes, uh, there are some private universities which are good, I'm not saying they are bad, because they are over -financed. They have big library, even though no one goes there. So they have good opportunities. So someone who has money, they go. You know? but they come. They come. So there are five or six people. They they have. They are part of our group, but they are not so active. But we don't work at all because even though public universities are totally destroyed and everything, uh, the students who go to public universities they they perceive the public universities as being more qualitative than private. You know. It's, uh, it's still something that everyone sees, that even though there is so, like, the, the, the situation is so miserable, uh, public universities are a little bit more serious than private universities. And now it's becoming like, if you are graduated from private universities, if you are graduated from the, let's say, the most, from this, the, the main private university, which is the most famous one, everyone knows that there you can go and take the exams and take everything easier than in public universities. So it has the higher standards, the, the public university. So we don't uh, take into consideration, even because it's not, uh, it's not practical, they have only 10% of the students. 
So we wanted to, to grab the majority of the students. You know, and that is the, the public sector. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have one question. How high are the tuition fees at private universities? It's uh, relatively high. Mm -hmm. I mean, comparing to, we have had from the lowest level, let's say, from 300 years. Per year? Uh, yeah, 300 euros per year, which was like, it was a, uh, it was not only university. At first, it was for driving licenses. Only for that, really. I mean, it was just for giving the driving licenses. Okay. Then it became a center for professional training. And then it became, let's say, like a faculty, and now they are giving PhD. But that was very famous in Albania, so even the government took the initiative to close that, just for public propaganda. So what we did, what we did the government, for example, before three months ago, they closed six universities. The, the worst of the universities were even the, uh, I don't know, the son of, the, I don't know, in Italy, there was a, uh, Lega Nord, uh, the North, North, it's about party. He graduated from this university, although he never entered Albania. So it was so like, uh, it, it's everywhere in the newspapers, yeah. and these were so like, even the public, and this was a huge propaganda by the government, and everyone accepted that it's being right. But uh, yeah, but the, now and then, for this. Public, private university which consider themselves to be really good, mm -hmm. uh, you can you have to pay like three thousand, three thousand five hundred. But it, it's that is a elementary, let's say, activity. You know, mm -hmm. you go there and you see that there is a class issue. You cannot go there if you are, I don't know, uh, what who goes there is that the, 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 the people I don't know, the the families, the, these big families, the oligarchy, let's say. Mm -hmm. And they go there, and they are in, they belong to the same class. Yeah. Let's say mm -hmm. they have a lot of money, so they can pay. They can have a lot of fun, but they are not <laughs> obliged to learn something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have a question for the Macedonian team. I, I don't know if I missed it before, but could you just explain how is it with public and private schools and um, tuition fees in your country? Okay, the, yeah, the trend is growing up in the last years. I mean, in the last six or seven years, there were three or four new universities, new private universities. There are only three, uh, yeah, only three uh, state universities, public universities, and by the ranking that was made, I mean, how, uh, two years ago, I think, from the European Union, uh, the first three universities, uh, the public universities were the first three of the top five. So actually the uh, private universities are not that expensive like the, you know, like the public, like the private universities in other countries. Like some of them cost uh, 500, 600 euros per year. And some of, some of them cost like 2,000 uh, and 3,000 uh, euros per year. But actually, I know they don't have they don't have uh, the students there don't have the opportunities to study like we do in the uh, public university or the private universities in other countries. They study like in some barracks and some apartments of some buildings, or even if they have buildings, they are probably new and uh, they don't have so much big libraries. But probably uh, from France, I've heard. I'm not sure about is it true or not. They have. Um, professors that came from uh, abroad and there are they see they they're good and they say if you want to study you can study but you can go you can get a diploma without studying so actually it's uh, it's not that popular like in Albania we don't have like 60 uh, private universities but they are growing each year like right now we're having three uh, three public and five or six private probably or something like that Maybe less, yeah. But um, every uh, every year, uh, one new comes up or something like that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I have a question for uh, each group. Um, how did the media respond to your protests, and uh, how did what was the distinction between? Uh, national media and I don't know some 
private own media. So right now in Macedonia everything is divided, is divided, including the media. So the media is bought. Every single medium we have, whether it's news or internet or everything, is bought by the government. Only one, actually, I think, yeah, one national TV was uh, recording us and was telling uh, the world what is going on. And right now there is huge protest from the national Macedonia national TV, where not we as a student but grown-ups are protesting against this. So our, if for some lady, for example, who is not doesn't have internet access, she could not have known what has happened during the occupancy and the uh, protest and everything. So it's very bad. We are, uh, we are, now the, I think they are discussing to close the public television because it's almost bankrupting. Uh, so now we are going to have only private media. <coughs> And also private media, like in Macedonia, is totally divided. Uh, but in general, they have, uh, let's say, they have announced our, our, like, our progress. Because what we do is that, although we are like 300, for example, we expect to be like 300, we go to in front of the prime ministry. Uh, because that is the, where the focus is. Uh, you have a group of media, like 20 televisions, they stay all the day there. Even though there is no activity. Because just stay there, it's the Prime Minister, you know, that is the point where everything happens. So we go there and uh, uh, automatically you will get the attention of the media. And uh, also if you, if, if you become popular in the Facebook, in social media, they cannot ignore you so easy. But there has been televisions, even the biggest one, who is supporting the government now, who before, uh, before the government came to power, he, uh, this television used to publish our, our activities, now they just ignore. But most of the media, and also influenced by the opposition, they, they publish our uh, activities. Yeah, but we don't have uh, public uh, television. No one sees that. It's, it's, uh, it's awful. Uh, it's <laughs> uh, can, I, can I add something? Because I remember earlier to add something that while the protest was uh, occurring, uh, this uh, government media, they, they found a picture of all of us and they circled our faces on the internet, circled our faces and they called my name, my surname, what have I done in the past, what, who is paying me, who is paying me to be there, um, how much they are paying me, <laughs> that was ridiculous and as uh, he mentioned, if you go in front of the minister, for example, the media will show up. In Macedonia, it won't show up. They will rather present a story how to peel an orange, because that's what has been happening. How to peel an orange, how the students are protesting against this what's going on. Um, just one Yes, of course. Um, just, um, uh, there was also uh, a thing that they were picking up people and uh, telling the like, that was so hilarious, yeah. Uh, during the first protest and during the occupation, uh, they were marking people, the millions, they are marking people, then they were circling them, they are telling like, uh, this is the guy who, who is a part of the occupation and he, and he is gay, and this is a guy who is uh, part of the protest and he takes drugs and everything like that. And that happened, yeah, that happened in uh, national media and public media. I can tell you our most negative experience with the right, right wing media in Slovenia. They called, I mean, they didn't just point out the, the, the individuals, but they called the whole organization as a terrorist organization. <laughs> uh, it's getting armed and preparing a national search to join the. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. They claim some of the students are protesting. They don't know. Yeah. Why. Uh -huh. It's like 20 or 30 people yeah. gather the uh -huh. night to get a paper revolution. We don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, so this front, well, how was your experience with the media? Well, as you all noticed, uh, well, the, situa the, situa the situation is the same, uh, media are in private hands and so on, and, uh, but uh, this is something we we'll, uh, all know, uh, this is the situation everywhere. Uh, and for a long period, uh, the student movement in Serbia had a really big problem to get through media, to uh, really uh, 
uh, create uh, an image in the public what was happening uh, in the universities, what was happening with the protests and so on. Uh, but and this was really hard. But this was not a problem uh, from the media. The media has their characteristics, and this is not their fault. They're just doing their job for the uh, private, uh, for the capitalists, for the bourgeoisie, and so on. So uh, the problem actually were in the student, uh, you know, perception of media. Uh, you just have to understand uh, the way that media works uh, in order to get their attention. Mm. Uh, and actually, our organization was the first organization who actually broke this media blockade uh, in 2014, uh, last year, uh, by occupation the, the rectory of uh, Belgrade University. Mm. We uh, found the right moment, the point of pressure, mm -hmm. uh, and this was the uh, it, uh, Time uh, we had at that time we had um, elections in Serbia, and what, that was sh shortly before the election day. Uh, so there was like media, I don't know how I say it, uh, media like uh, media silence about the politics, uh, organizations, and so on. <coughs> uh, and then we made this occupation and get their attention. There was a lot of uh, uh, free space in the media, uh, and also this was like uh, you know a scandal in <laughs> Serbia. Uh, this occupation. Uh, uh, so this was this was uh, you know the, the the first time we actually broke this media uh, uh, blockade, and after that, um, media just can get, uh, cannot get uh, enough of us. They are uh, calling us everything every time anything happens in universities and so on. So we are very interested in, uh, interesting now in the eyes of media. Uh, before that, uh, actually the the the. Uh, Wrong approach uh, came from the students. Uh, there was some uh, we were operating a uh, student front among some other uh, initiatives uh, and uh, groups, uh, and there was some uh, adventuristic approach from these groups. They don't really understood the media. Some were like, "Let's boycott the media." Other was like, like uh, "Let's." Uh, you know, uh, overestimating. Over oh, yeah, overestimating or underestimating the media. No, 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 no. Uh, we had uh, both both sides. Uh, so really. Uh, you can you can uh, uh, manage to uh, place the right picture through media and the publicity, but only if you if you like uh, um, subordinate from time to time to their logic. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, telling your story and what the real problem is. Uh, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Just I wanted to add that uh, we should know the importance of the media, but we should also not overestimate their, their role uh, and their, their power, I mean, and to figure out that we are cleverer than them. And, <laughs> and not to make tactics in, uh, in uh, like, uh, relations how the media will, not to go to that extreme. That's also important. Okay, thank you for your answers, and uh, if I remember correctly, there was a hand. I asked you a question. Uh, a question for all news. My question is uh, if and how much money uh, do the uh, private universities uh, receive in, co in comparison to the private u universities? Uh, Can I just sorry ask that you, we all ask all those questions after we make the, the presentation yes. because uh, you know yeah, okay, 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 yeah, okay, maybe we, we should, should talk. Okay. Okay, okay, then remember your question. Okay. Okay. So okay, now the students here from Serbia, I guess. Yeah. 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 From Sana. From Sana. From Sana. Yeah, we are finished. Yeah, from Sana. 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 We never saw the internet in Serbia, no? <laughs> <laughs> so we are learning how to use it. <laughs> uh, okay, hello. We are uh, from uh, organization Student Front in Serbia, and uh, we should uh, uh, like briefly make a brief history of the organization. And through that, we will talk about the uh, situation in Serbia. So the Student Front was officially founded uh, at the Founding Cong Congress in 2012 and it was after uh, this one here, we call it Big Protest, 
uh, uh, for and it was big protest in the sense that it was the first protest in Serbia uh, after the counter-revolutionary push uh, by the imperialist propaganda uh, agenda in 2000, 5th October. Uh, it was the first uh, protest that called for free public education. So that was like uh, the main goal. Uh, before that, uh, there were like some uh, 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 par partially uh, uh, goals and uh, not really understanding the situation. The students very often were uh, like uh, uh, Want the goals which are like Bologna process is not uh, 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 is not properly in uh, in uh, introduced in Serbia. So we need the better Bologna process and uh, uh, the the people in power do for them because they don't do the Bologna process. And this first process was free public education. It was the only meaning of the protest, and it, it gathered like I don't know about approximately 500 people, which was really uh, uh, big for us and uh, after that there was a founding congress uh, the story actually begins a little bit before in the protest of 2011 when we had like first uh, bigger uh, protest in Serbia after the uh, contra-revolutionary putsch and, and uh, it was like we all from Student Front, we were in some um, other organizations, everybody was there, there and there. And uh, through, through the fighting, through that big blockade in 2011, which was uh, for like 30, 30, uh, three or four weeks, uh, they were blockading the philology faculty, faculty phil philosophy faculty, uh, faculty of higher techniques, audio, visual, I don't know. Uh, the faculty in Novi Sad was located, and uh, um, yes, and so that was the like uh, first thi thing actually ever happened in Serbia after the, you know that that was anti-capitalist that called for stopping the neoliberalism in Serbia, uh, going to the public uh, sphere, and. Uh, in 2012, we got, went to the to the that uh, goal for the free education, which was something new. Actually, I mean, after after a few years, nobody nobody talked about that. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, the Bologna process started in Serbia in 2006. I forgot to say that. And uh, so until the 2011. Uh, there were no actually some. Uh, there was one uh, protest in 2006, uh, blocking on uh, of philosophy faculty, but it was a few days and it was something that sparkled and said uh, we don't want this, and it grew uh, after that until this, uh, until to these years. Uh, after that, 2012, uh, we made. Uh, because of uh, we figure out in that uh, protest of 2011 that we don't want uh, um, chaotic, uh, uh, you know, chaotic movement which is going from time to time, from October to October, <laughs> simultaneously, uh, you know, and you uh, and uh, only rea rea relying on spontaneous stuffs so on spontaneous things, so we wanted the daily fighting organization which is uh, highly organized, uh, which has its organization hierarchy in the means of, uh, you know, uh, proceeding the, the democratically uh, 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 decisions. And uh, after that, we like uh, uh, started to use uh, uh, less energy and got uh, bigger results. Uh, really small amounts of energies, we got like lots of uh, results and we can see on this picture for two years what we what we done i mean that was you know it was the first protest in 2011 after two years we got like five times more people on on the, the on the protest so uh yeah and after that uh, 2000 uh, i mean that are details if you're interested i can talk to you briefly about that so after 2012 we had uh, some blockades uh, sporadically on some uh, artist academies, on uh, again on philosophy faculty, and then in 2013 the, the blockade of rectorate, which made us uh, that uh, uh, 
media breakthrough. And uh, this, uh, the most important uh, uh, protest for us, which made us like uh, the leading force of the student movement, was this year. Uh, and we made, uh, and he will talk about it more. We started that uh, one year uh, before with planning, like we had a plan. Uh, and, uh, we said, we realized. Yes, yes. We, 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 we had one year plan. And, uh, we did it in all the Yes. So, yes. Uh, now he, he, he will talk about the protest of okay. 2014 and then we will talk about uh, well, the protest of 2014. Uh, the rich experience. Uh, there were a lot of happenings, a lot of sites included, a lot of organizations, people, initiatives, and so on. And the situation is really complex. Uh, perhaps uh, um, I, I will. I will tell you more about that uh, actually tomorrow because we're, we're going to discuss the student organizing. But I will make like uh, uh, short elaboration in order to understand uh, actually the, the, the situation in Serbia, uh, uh, Serbia um, education system uh, through through it. Uh, there was like, of course, uh, like. Uh, uh, in the other countries, uh, we have this kind of uh, student uh, legal representatives, student parliaments. Uh, and in uh, 2011 and after that, uh, the students uh, realized that uh, this system does not work, that, that they don't really represent uh, the student interests, uh, and uh, that they are um, uh, highly inefficient. Uh, so actually, uh, the first time students were completely against them, completely against uh, this uh, SCONUS. SCONUS is like uh, the, uh, this main um, uh, official organization, like the Union of All uh, Parliaments and so on. Uh, in 2014, uh, we uh, managed to uh, use them. To use their, to use them, to use their, uh, their uh, like uh, position, uh, we make pressure on them so that they can really make a pressure on the ministry. Actually, through them, we make the pressure on the ministry of education. Sorry, I just wanted to, I just forgot to make an introduction for him. In 2011, it was very important the plans, uh, the the things which is counter the the uh, officially of official It was very important, like. If the students are gathering independently and talks about stuff, but when when the, the movement started to develop, it changed the forms, and that's why we like need the organization to uh, that we can that spontaneous and, and energy can uh, you know direct. So uh, the situation a little bit changed in 2014 after the after our intervention. Yes. Uh, the intervention was that uh, we actually didn't ignore them and we didn't fight against them. We called them for their responsibilities, uh, for their duties. You know, uh, you should do your job. Uh, uh, there was this problem uh, with new amendments to the law of education, uh, which included some of the acts with, uh, which will actually... Uh, th 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 there are no new strikes on the material position of the students, uh, uh, especially of the st students of the uh, <coughs> Of the master studies, you know, cutting, uh, lowering the budget places for the master studies, and uh, also uh, cutting the uh, uh, hiring the the uh, tuition fees and uh, so on. So we call them for their responsibility. This scholars, this uh, official representatives, and then they uh, ignored us, of course. But then we made our first move. And organized uh, the first protest at first of uh, the first of uh, October, uh, and we got a lot of media attention. Also, this was uh, like the example of how you use the uh, medias because uh, on the first of October, when the school starts, uh, university uh, year starts, uh, of course, the the one of the things in the, the media will be the students. So uh, in this uh, in this. Uh, they you put them this story, you know, the protest, the, the, the year begins, uh, begins with the uh, student protest. Uh, so they, 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 that got a lot of uh, attention in media and uh, SCONUS uh, could not ignore that. Uh, especially because we called uh, to them, we called uh, 
uh, them for, for responsibilities. <clears throat> so uh, they called us and we arranged a meeting and we talked with them and uh, their, their idea was to organize a, pro uh, 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 to pro to organize a protest together uh, on 7th of uh, October and we already had the plan and we already announced on the 1st of October that we'll, we'll have the protest in the, uh, in the 15th of, uh, of October and we realized that their agenda is to you know, uh, take over this uh, movement, take over the student protest and to si uh, slowly silence them to, uh, as they always do. Uh, but <laughs> actually, we get uh, get out together with them on the protest of uh, in the 15th of uh, in the 7th of October. Uh, the protest was, you know, ridiculous. Uh, we have like uh, non non social non non. Uh, uh, it was like in a bad framework. It does not uh, applies to the real problems, uh, and the paroles were um, m uh, misplaced uh, and so on. Uh, but this was actually the the uh, this made made pressure on the ministry because uh, there was this, this uh, official uh, organization who is organ uh, who is organizing the protest and uh, the ministry has to intervene it has to uh, say something about the problem the, they are now included in this situation and they, uh, they cannot uh, just ignore it. Uh, so after that, actually, uh, these negotiations with the ministry failed because we didn't want to accept their their proposal. These solutions were bad, uh, and the, uh, of, uh, officials from the uh, officials from the scholars, uh they they signed this document together with the ministry without us. Uh, this uh, false agreement. Uh, so after that, we made the protest against them. Uh, on 15 of October, I guess this agreement, this is this big protest on the uh, lower picture. Uh, it was the biggest protest uh, uh, in uh, uh, Serbia uh, in the last two decades, I think. Protest. So, what is the context uh, of all of this? Uh, the context, of course, is the main problems which we found in the education system are, of course, the implementation of the uh, Bologna process, uh, uh, the, the hiring tendency of uh, privatization of education, uh, also the high tuition fees and the uh, violation of the autonomy of the university. Uh, so we will uh, now talk about that uh, in order to, for you to better understand the uh, situation in the uh, uh, educational system in Serbia. Uh, so uh, Bologna process, uh, we found that uh, since the adoption of this uh, 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 process in Serbian universities, public universities, we have a constant lowering of quality of education. Uh, education system through this process uh, does not uh, uh, does not have the purpose to really educate, uh, but only to inform a student, to provide uh, you know basic information uh, and so on. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, the they don't have the interest to really edu educate you with a uh, wide uh, knowledge and critical thinking and so on, but only what you need to know to do your job, uh, maximizing the, the profit for, for the employer. Uh, to, like, like in the young, uh, young uh, bourgeois society, we had like, uh, they, are, they were educating people only uh, what, specializing. specializing what they need to know how to operate the, the machine or to do their job, but nothing wider. Uh, and so on. And this is the Bologna process. The Bologna process has the goal to subordinate the education system to the needs of capitalist free market economy. Uh, according to this idea, one does not have to uh, have other knowledge and skills uh, uh, than those which are necessary uh, in order to magnify the profit for an employer. Uh, also, uh, we consider uh, European credit and transfer accumulation system uh, and exam points to be a, like a in that inadequate uh, framework to quantitatively express the quality. Of, quaint, uh, of contained knowledge. Uh, for example, many students in Serbia are forced to work during their studies because of the bad uh, economic situation and they cannot really get this enough uh, of the pre-exam points uh, and <coughs> the points in order to, to uh, pass them th their exam uh, even if they show the, the actual knowledge at the, the exam itself. For example, we can, we can use also about the uh, uh, European Crisis and Justice and Correction points. We have uh, like this we can use an example of the student of medicine, I don't know. A student of medicine which is have the, uh, have the exam at... Uh, 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 exam at... 
uh, which I know uh, is worth like eight. Uh, this uh, is the TC point, uh, and uh, uh, he needs to pass it in order to uh, get to the next year or to uh, have enough points to be on the budgets. Uh, and uh, he needs to pass it, and we cannot blame him because we, he simply does not have the money to pay tuition fees or to you know he doesn't uh, want to. Uh, uh, to lose his year, uh, so uh, he can, he may try to pass it uh, at, at any at any cost, uh, and because uh, Bologna is like lowering the uh, uh, criteria for for the knowledge which is enough for knowledge uh, to pass the exam, uh, he can pass it, but uh, that can cause of course uh, really big problems in his practical work and so on. So uh, what is the point of this? The point is that Bologna is really uh, like creating this negative selection, you know, you are gathering points, you are, you are not gathering knowledge. Uh, uh, negative selection and uh, demotivates the, the, you know, hard-working students, uh, the students who really like uh, have the quality of knowledge and so on. Uh, so uh, also we have the problem with this uh, tricycle uh, circle degree system. Uh, the bachelor's, uh, master's, and uh, doctor studies, uh, and we all know that this this big problem in, in Serbia, in particular, we have the problem. Uh, you know, you cannot find a job with your bachelor's uh, bachelor's degree. There is no job for you. You have to have a master's diploma, and uh, but with master's diploma, you also can. You can find a job, and uh, also uh, that means a new and higher tuition fees and uh, new new cost, new problems, uh, and also uh, Bologna is making like uh, uh, competition uh, among students, and uh, the expression "colleague" means nothing; uh, it's uh, it's stultified. Uh, that destroying teamwork and lowering further the quality of education. So this is the Bologna process and, uh, in general. This is Bologna process in Serbia, and we found this to be the like uh, main problem that this uh, represents the subordination to the pro uh, educational system, to the uh, capitalist uh, system, and uh, um, privatization of education, of course, is uh, on that aspect of it. If you can. So, just to add a few more things, uh, we also have a problem with uh, private schools, which are actually yeah, private industry, which are actually some business companies, which like set, sold and buy the diplomas. And it's uh, big scandals for politicians. All the politicians come from one a special private university and they, they don't even know the name of the mentor, the name of the classes, uh, uh, some of them they don't know the name of the faculty or the diploma that they have. So it's a big scandal and it's really uh, amongst the people, uh, it, it doesn't have any, any uh, 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 validity, but you know, the people in power have the, their, their, their thing. But still, it's not, uh, as I figure out, in Albania, it's like a really bad situation in, in that uh, manner. Here is still not everybody are laughing to the private universities, and there are many uh, public schools. Uh, public schools are, are better than uh, the private universities. Some art acad academies are, some people go to some private art academies, but that's a, that is a small uh, uh, percent. Uh, so the, actually, uh, what I w which I I could end the point is that uh, we see the pro Bologna process and the process of privatization of education and uh, of higher institution fees and uh, all the stuff as as part of the class struggle in our country, as part of the anti-imperialist struggle in our country, because the imperialists who uh, crushed our our homeland Yugoslavia and which uh, occupied the parts of our country. Uh, like Kosovo, like uh, uh, stuffs on uh, uh, the, the, the uh, how we say in Bosnia, there are also big uh, 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 NATO bases and stuff like that. So it's a it's a it's a part of uh, anti-imperialist class struggle uh, uh, in Serbia and uh, in all in all Balkans. So uh, our organization is a student organization, but it's, it's also a class student organization, organization of poor students, you know. So uh, that is really important for us in this 
uh, last protest, the, the protest was class protest. There, there was no uh, abstract things like students and uh, only, you know, uh, some humanistic approach. But the paroles are, uh, you know, like uh, stop the scorn, stop the fascist, the, 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 uh, law, the law will not pass. Uh, or uh, you know all the, all the the, the you know uh, we are students we are not clients and stuff like that which are which are and the paroles were were you know yes yeah, students and workers unite and stuff like that so uh, uh, that is the the, the stuff we understand the student question as part of the class the struggle as part of the anti imperialist struggle uh, I also want to say the, the part of the anti imperialism we see that uh, privatization the Bologna is all coming from you know the forces which which occupied our country uh, NATO Pact and the uh, European Union also so uh, that is the point that uh, uh, we have this humanistic approach like. Uh, it's not good Bologna for the student uh, he doesn't get his he doesn't get his education but he gets you know just information that's also okay that's really important but uh, just to know that uh, the, the basic stuff think in, in the in the class it's a class struggle okay uh, thank you very much for the presentation uh, now I'm gonna have to um, excuse myself myself because I have to go to work uh, so <laughs> I'm going to join you back at the Faculty of Social Sciences in the evening, and I'm going to ask Roman or somebody to take over the moderation of the debate. Mate, are you? Tina, who's going to take over this debate? It's the one with pauses, maybe it's the one Ah, okay, I thought we were going to have just a little bit of uh, debate now, because there's, there was one question that hasn't no. been asked, and so, so, so Yeah, but I have to leave at that yeah. moment right now. Yes. Okay. okay, you ask the question and you moderate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my question was, uh, how much money or funding do private universities and schools uh, receive from the state in comparison to the state universities and schools? Okay, uh, well actually, according to the constitution, uh, the, uh, um, the government cannot, uh, you know, like, uh, support financially these uh, private universities, but they do. Uh, the part of the allocation, allocations for the private the public universities are like 0.8% uh, of the budgets, which is really low. It's uh, like... Uh, uh, it's like not enough. For, and uh, then... Uh, of course, the universities have to uh, f uh, to fill their uh, budget, uh, uh, their cost from the student pockets, uh, and this is actually uh, like the autonomy of the university in Serbia. I don't have the like uh, freedom of scientific research, research or expression. Instead of this, you have economic uh, economic autonomy, which means uh, uh, that universities can uh, really. Uh, uh, Supplement their uh, payment from the expenses uh, and expenses from the student pockets, and this uh, situation leads to abuse of such position and rise of, rise of corruption. I don't have a statistic. Uh, there is an, an initiative now to like to do this, like to give the money to the yes. mega trend. Mega trend is the, like the main private university. Uh, Mitya Popovic and stuff. And guy our president. Our, our president. Uh, and, but uh, uh, that uh, will not pass. I mean, the climate is not like that in Serbia. Private universities are really on the shaking ground. So I don't have the statistic uh, data uh, to the, I don't know number or percent uh, they supporting or which, with which they support them. But in any case, uh, they are they are violating their own constitution by you know uh, giving their money. And the other hand, uh, they're constantly. Constantly, like uh, uh, constantly, uh, public universities are constantly being neglected and set aside. And uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Currently, uh, private universities receive no funds from the state uh, because in order to receive funds, they have to be a non-profit organization, which they are not. So they are pushing for this reform, 
and in this reform there is a point where they, of course influenced by them, it is said that if a private university changed their its status from non profit organization from profit organization to non profit organization, then it is allowed to take uh, state funds. So that is also the, the reason why they are pushing so hard this reform. But currently they receive no 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 funds, not in legal terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same goes for private universities in Macedonia, like in Albania. They don't get funding for the university. Actually, it works similar to a business because it's a it's a newest trend. Like it, like I told you, the first private university was from like six years ago, and it works like a business. They actually pay taxes for for the students there. Uh, like I don't know how high is the tax, but they do pay taxes and they don't get uh, funding from the uh, from from the government because it's not a uh, not profitable organization. Yeah, same goes like in Romania. Okay, so we will just take a, we will just make a 15 minute break right now and meet at 12 o'clock when we will proceed with uh, a lecture from Kimosh Kashvitz.